Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show. But I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. We'll be right back to the show. But before we do, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Factor Mills. Dot com, where if you go to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50, you can get 50% off your first order. That's factormills.com slash unbroken50. If you're like me and you are a person who is busy trying to create a life, heal, work on their health, wealth, and relationships, and not to mention deal with the day-to-days of normal life, you do not have time to be going to the grocery store and trying to figure out what you're going to cook every single day of the week. In fact, one time I did the math and I realized I was spending over 15 hours a week at the grocery store and cooking. When I added factor, I got to use that time for myself, for my family, for my friends, for my community, and for my business. And so if you're in the place where you need some more support in the kitchen, head to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50 to get 50% off. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? I hope that you're doing well wherever you are in the world. I am Michael Anthony, author, speaker, coach, mentor, and advocate for adult survivors of childhood trauma. And as usual, you are listening to the Michael Unbroken podcast. First, I was thinking about something as we start to head into this new year, and that being this idea about disappointment. 
and how we navigate that as trauma survivors and, and more importantly, how we navigate that as human beings. You know, I think one of the huge mistakes that people make in their trauma healing journey or in any personal growth journey is not recognizing that everyone faces disappointment. You know, even in my life right now, everything that I do, all, all the traveling, the books, the podcast, the speaking, the coaching, everything, like I fail constantly, right? I think about it every single day, how I've made mistakes, how somehow I've not done that thing, how somehow it could be anything, right? It can be from, did I not show up as hard as I could have in the workout? Did I not write well enough? Did I not whatever? There's always something, right? There's always something we can be disappointed in ourselves about. The struggle that we face is changing the narrative from disappointment to understanding that those places and times in which we fell are opportunities to learn. I don't know how else to put it. Those moments of failure, they're opportunities to learn. One of the biggest problems that we face though, and I might just say that again and again, is that personal narrative that we have with our relationship with disappointment. Look, we're used to it. We've leveraged the idea of the world always letting us down, our family, our friends, our community, and then we tack it on to do our, ourselves. So you're thinking, well, great. I'm always disappointing myself. I'm always letting myself down. I'm always thinking about the what if, the what could have been, the this or that. The truth about it is that disappointment will always be in our lives. I don't know that there's any person on planet Earth that will reach 100% of their optimal potential. And I think about my life and I'm like at 3% of it. Hey, what's up Unbroken Nation? Just wanna take a moment and invite you to be my guest at Think Unbroken Conference this November. That's right. Think Unbroken is hosting our Unbroken Con for free. It's five days of trauma transformation information with myself, special guests, and even some of the leading experts in trauma education from around the world. For five days, we're going to jump into what it means to actually take the steps to be unbroken. All you have to do is register for free at unbrokencon.com. That's U-N-B-R-O-K-E-N-C-O-N.com. That's right. Five days of trauma transformation information with me, special guests, and some of the world's leading trauma trained experts for free for five days this November. More details to come, but in the meantime, go to unbrokencon.com to register and I'll see you there. I don't know that you ever get to a hundred but that doesn't mean you don't try. And the relationship that we have with disappointment has to shift because you have to give yourself the space to be willing to step onto the path and say, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to put more emphasis on my efforts. I'm going to show up for myself better today. I'm going to do the things on my to-do list. I'm going to be kind to myself, whatever that is. And yet we're faced with that narrative of enough. And that's what it is. There's such a correlation between our understanding of what is enough and our capacity and then letting ourselves down. Now, I think there's levels of this also. On one hand, you have, am I showing up for myself and truly doing the things that I said I was going to do? Or am I disappointed because I have not done that? On the other side of it is, I'm disappointed in myself because of the expectations that other people around me have put on me. And now that is how I believe that I should exist in the world. Now, these are obviously two totally different narratives, but both about disappointment. If you are in a place where you feel disappointed about your efforts, then you have to take a really hard, true and honest look at your life and understand where you are in your own way. So much of this journey is about understanding where you are at this moment to get to where you want to go. And if today, right now, you're stuck in this narrative of I am disappointed in myself because I did not show up for myself, that is tied so deeply into our worth, our value, and our self-esteem. And it's really easy to get that misconstrued with effort, right? Because there is a correlation between what you put in and what you get out, but there's also the mindset that you have, the way you think about yourself, the way you feel about yourself in the world. And the sad part of it is many of us, and I've mentioned this before, are ingrained with this software that says we're not good enough, smart enough, capable enough. And so we reach in towards these levels of perfectionism and saying to ourselves, I have to be great at everything or I'm going to be disappointed when I'm not. Realistically, 
I don't know a single person who's great at anything. And I mean, I'm not, I'm certainly am not. And so I measure that and I think about how can I just show up more, better, stronger, harder, more efficient, whatever that thing is, and keep moving forward. And that's the thing here. Can you keep moving forward? Can you keep showing up every single day and doing that? And you have to reframe your understanding of what disappointment means. If you take it and you spin it on its head and you go, these moments in which I did not live up to my expectations as self-defined can be moments of learning. And I can measure that and look at it and go, okay, in this moment, I did not lead up, live up to my expectation of what I set for myself. Thus, I have failed. Now, disappointment can be an emotional response, right? But it also can kind of be that trigger that throws you further down that spiral because you don't do it one time and next thing you know, 10 days, five months, whatever has gone by, you're looking back on your life and you're going, man, I'm, I'm such a disappointment. Where does that come from? Is that about you? Or is that about the other people? Is that something dad said when you were four? Is that something that your teacher said when you were 17? Is that what your boss said the other day? Disappointment is always gonna be there. There's no way to escape it. It's just fact. But how do you understand it? Can I look at it and go, hmm, all right, I didn't show up for myself here. Thus, I'm not going to actually beat myself up about this because there's no space. Why am I going to beat myself up about this when the whole world already is beating me up about everything else, right? Then you sit with it and you measure it. And you ask yourself a very difficult question. And that question is, why did I not show up for myself in this moment, right? Stress, anxiety, depression. You don't know how to start. You don't know what to do. You don't feel like it. The, it's tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Is it procrastination? There's so many different reasons why we don't show up in that moment. But you have to get brutally honest with yourself and lay that out on the table and say, this is why I didn't go to the gym. This is why I didn't go to work on time. This is why I didn't eat well tonight. And if you can sit with it and understand that the baseline of it may be tied into something like anxiety or depression or narratives ingrained in you from your youth, then what you can do is sit with that for a moment and start to create a framework into what's next. So you measure it. It becomes a point of data. You go, okay, I didn't go to the gym this morning because I slept in and then I didn't have enough time because I would have been late to work. All right, game plan. How do you get up to go to gym without putting yourself in a position where you're going to be late for work? Well, let's break it down. And, and people talk about the gym option all the time, and it's just easy, so I'll go there. But like, let's think about this goal. What is the goal? What is it that I want to accomplish in my life? I want to go to the gym three times a week, right? Easy. Lay out your clothes the night before. Put it in your phone. You need to have a calendar laying out your entire day, start to finish when it comes to the things that you want to move towards. Because without direction, you'll just be spinning. I've talked about this many times. Now, you got your clothes laid out, you got your alarm set, now comes the place of accountability. When that alarm goes off, you have to force yourself to get up. You have to force yourself to make your life your life. Otherwise, you're going to be living on other people's terms. And when you live on other people's terms, you live on other people's time. That's something you have to take into consideration. We'll be right back to today's show, but first I need to ask you a question. Are you feeling stuck? Are you feeling like you don't have the support to go to the next level in your healing journey? Are you feeling like you wish you had a little bit more support from not only myself, but the Unbroken Nation? Well, my friend, I want to invite you to come and join our live weekly coaching sessions in Think Unbroken. All you have to do is go to keys, K-E-Y-S, keys.thinkunbroken.com to sign up and join us today with 100% money back, no questions asked, guaranteed and no contract or commitment every week for the next year, you can come and be a part of our live coaching sessions each Monday as we dive deep into not only answering your questions, but questions from the unbroken nation and help you take all of the information that you learn in the podcast, in the courses and other areas of this journey, bring them into your life and use it in a way that is practical, life-changing and transformative. So my friend, join us at keys.thinkunbroken.com and we will see you this Monday. And so. The alarm goes off. What do you do? I don't know about you, but at one point in my life, I, this definitely wasn't you because it's my experience. I was, I was 24, 25 years old, 350 pounds, laying in bed, eating chocolate cake at 11 o'clock in the morning, watching the CrossFit games, knowing, knowing that the gym was in the building across the street from my apartment. 
why didn't I go? Mindset, the way I felt about myself, my self-esteem, the way I feel about the world, the way the world had kind of buried itself on me. In hindsight, I can look back on that and I can understand that and go, this is the reason why. In the moment though, what I had to end up doing to start to create the change in the narrative and, and really that, that snowball effect to what was next is I had to start forcing myself to go to the gym. Think about this. Sometimes the way that we create a narrative change in our life, and honestly, most of the time, is through action. What am I willing to do to have the life that I want to have and moving forward and being progressive and staying the course when it gets hard? Because you know it will get hard. And in those moments of failure, right, which isn't a bad thing. I really wish we could step away from this idea that failing is bad because failing means you tried. I would rather fail than to not know, right, to not have that data point. And so in those moments of failure, instead of leveraging this place of disappointment, where you're like, ah, I let myself down again. I don't feel good about who I am, blah, 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 whatever that narrative is. You look at it from an unbiased perspective and you go, oh, okay, I recognize that the reason I didn't go to the gym today is because I did not set my alarm. Easy. I didn't go to the gym today because I woke up and I was anxious, depressed, and I didn't want to do it. Okay, fair. I didn't go to the gym today because even though I walked to the car and I got in it, I just couldn't bring myself to go. Now, the gym is an easy scenario. This could be literally anything. It could be writing that blog, going to that job interview, going to therapy, anything, name it. This is processed the same across the board. Disappointment is disappointment because it means somewhere in there we had a failure or a moment of failure or not living up to expectation, right? Piece of cake. We got that nailed down. So now what do you do? You take those data points. You take this understanding that you've just created about the experience that you've had and you reverse engineer it. Meaning that you go, okay, if my goal is this, but then this thing happened, what do I have to do to mitigate the risk of it happening again? Now, there is a conversation to be had about forcing yourself into action, into a change of narrative, into having and creating the life that you want to have. Often, one of the biggest reasons that we let ourselves down and we feel this feeling of disappointment is because we didn't show up to begin with. Now, that is much different than failure right? Not showing up to start, that is not the same as failing. I would much rather fail than to never show up to the game. And so now ask yourself, are you showing up? Are you doing the thing that you said you're going to do? And if you're on the course and you're going and you have momentum, well, momentum is one of the most important things in this entire journey. It's about continuing to go and go and go. And in that moment in which momentum stops and you're stuck and you fall back and you look at it and you go, oh no, I didn't show up today, even though I did it for 37 days in a row. On day 38, it's not a breakdown of the entire system, right? Because we progress, we hit these plateaus. And when you're at it, then at that moment, that becomes a new baseline, okay? So now you have the understanding of, I just made it 37 days to here, doing the thing that I said that I was going to do amazing. That's so good. Perfect. But day 38 didn't make it. Something happened. Life didn't feel like it, whatever, whatever that narrative is, right? That is not a moment to employ disappointment upon yourself, but instead a moment to sit and go, what happened? How do I take data from this moment and figure out what it was that happened so that tomorrow or even that day, right? I think people go tomorrow, 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 but man, you know this as well as I do. Tomorrow's not promised. You could die right now. I could die before I finish saying this, right? And so because I understand that, how do I implement the change right now in this moment to move forward? That's the art of momentum through pushing yourself. Can you get to this place where even though you've had this moment of breakdown, you go, okay, I understand what happened. I'm going to go do it anyway, right? And so Day 38, you sit with it. Maybe you needed to rest, right? That's a conversation to be had too, right? Am I going too hard? Have I done too much? Am I stretched too thin? Do I need a break? Or am I just not feeling it? So I'm not going to do it. If you want to step into what's next in your life, you have to force yourself to do things just, even in the times that you don't feel like doing it. Because like, to be honest with you, if we only did things when we felt like doing them, we'd probably never do anything. I know I would never do anything, right? And I think about that moment back there being 350 pounds, watching CrossFit games, and then thinking about my life of like doing CrossFit in multiple different countries and having this really nice physique for a while and then COVID happening and now getting back into the routine and, and looking at these as data 
data point and going, okay, I'm not disappointed in myself, but what I have to do here is understand what has happened, create a game plan and roadmap, and then accountability. The world is going to beat you up all day, every day, no matter what, from your hair color to the size you are, to your gender, to everything in between. You already know this. I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. So why, why the hell are you going to beat yourself up? Right. That's the easy thing to step into. And people will go, well, I don't have self-esteem and I don't have self-belief and I don't have boundaries or anything like that. Okay, fine. You don't right now, not in this moment. And so how do you do that? You create them. You have to create your life and you're either going to do it on your time or you're going to do it on someone else's. And I think the worst thing that you can do is not move forward. Take a data point of failure and enjoy it and go, wow, I actually tried this. Take a data point of failure and then measure, am I being a perfectionist? Am I looking to try to do something that is not possible, not feasible, right? Take a data point of failure and look at, am I just doing too much? I need to give myself space. I need to give myself grace and leniency, right? There's so much information in what happens, but to beat yourself up because you think that you have to do something for the purpose of fulfilling someone else's desires is the number one way that you will fail in a way that will then turn into this self-sabotage into this depression, this despair, whatever that thing may be. And so I want you to think about that as you move forward. Disappointment is everywhere. But what you do with it is going to dictate the way that you move forward in life. So I hope that was super helpful for you guys. As usual, thank you so much for stopping by. Please subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend. Until next time, my friends, be unbroken. I'll see ya. Hey, Unbroken Nation, we'll be right back to the show. But I wanted to let you know that you can grab a copy of my first book, Think Unbroken, Understanding and Overcoming Childhood Trauma, for free. If you go to book.thinkunbroken.com, you can download the PDF ebook version of the book and get everything that I know about the baseline of healing trauma for free downloaded to your email right now. Just go to book.thinkunbroken.com to download your copy of Think Unbroken, Understanding and Overcoming Childhood Trauma for a PDF for your phone. Again, that is book.thinkunbroken.com. Thank you so much for listening to Think Unbroken. Please share this episode with someone who could use it and help us move forward in our mission of ending generational trauma in our lifetime. And if you would, please take five seconds to pop on iTunes or Spotify, hit that five star, leave a review, and you can also reach out to us on social at Michael Unbroken or at Think Unbroken. And of course, you can check out our YouTube channel at Think Unbroken. Thank you for being a part of Unbroken Nation, my friends, and until next time, be unbroken. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show. But I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting and more. I'm starting a waitlist for the group right now. And I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. Not all bread is created equal. And if you like your soft, fluffy, moist, and delicious, then Hero Bread and Buns should be your first choice. But Hero Bread isn't just about taste and texture. It's high in fiber with ultra low net carbs with zero grams of sugar. Order today at Hero.co and use the code AH10 to get 10% off your first purchase. That's AH10 at Hero.co, H-E-R-O dot C-O for 10% off your first purchase.